Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the Monday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. It's a great time to be with you. Thanks for joining us. We've had the opportunity, I have had, I should say, the opportunity over the weekend to preach the Word of God. And obviously, I enjoy being able to be on the radio program. But when I'm on the radio, I can't see you. I can't see my audience. But when I'm in a local church preaching the Word of God, I love seeing the faces and the eyes, the delight on the believers' faces to have the Word of God open, declared, and then watch the Spirit of God take the Word of God and change lives. That, my friend, is just flat out fun. What a privilege I have. And I pray that you were in your own local church enjoying the word of God yourself in corporate worship. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to 1 John chapter 1. We have been in chapter 1 for a few days talking about a set of verses here. We're coming back to verses 5 through 10 again today. Get your Bible and join me there if at all possible, 1 John chapter 1. Get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got three R words to give you today, and I've got a gospel tract here as well. I've got a great story to tell you about this particular tract, but let me lead into our study this way. Friend, the other day I embarrassed myself. Maybe I should say I embarrassed myself again. I have all the same pride issues in me as you do. And part of my pride issue is this. I don't want to look dumb in front of other people. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of others. And you understand that. I know you do because you're just like me. We all want other people to think that we're savvy. We want people to think that we have it all together. And friend, none of us have it all together. Well, the story goes like this. I was standing with somebody, a person that I know slightly. They were talking on their cell phone, but their cell phone was plugged into their ear and I couldn't see it. So I thought they were talking to me. And every time they asked a question, guess what I did? I answered it. (laughs) When their phone call was over, they looked at me like I was, well, like I was a jerk. And I guess I was. Why? because I didn't understand the context of the conversation. I get to that point because here in 1 John chapter 1, we come to a verse today that we misunderstand because we mess mess up the context in the conversation. Come with me to verse 7. Let me show you what I mean. I mentioned a gospel tract a moment ago. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. A gospel tract, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, it's an evangelism tool. It's a way to get people to get the gospel to them, for them to read it, for the Spirit of God to take the Word of God and bring conviction and repentance and bring them to faith in Jesus Christ. I want to give you a free sample packet. Did you hear the word free? (laughs) I want to give you a free sample packet of one each of all of our English gospel tracts. One of those in there is this one entitled, We Are Grateful. We are grateful. And this one's designed to give to people that are in or have been in the military. Now, I said I had a funny story. Recently, a man who is 95 years of age went home to glory. He used this tract all the time. He would go particularly to the VA center where he would get medical help and he would hand this out to some of the other veterans that were there. One day, one of the hospital personnel tried to tell him he could not give out the gospel tracts. He looked them dead in the eye as many a a World War II 95-year-old veteran could do and he said to them, I was wounded in World War II fighting for the freedom to hand out gospel tracts and you're not going to take this right from me. I'm going to give them out. Well, 
well. The hospital personnel, they just kind of backed down, and that great servant of God continued to give out the gospel tracts. Friend, we want to give you gospel tracts to give out, whether it's to military personnel, your grandkids, the neighbor, grocer, whoever it may be. Please be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. We'll be glad to send you that free sample packet in the next business day's mail. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to 1 John chapter 1, verses 5, 6, and 7, say this. Well, let me just read verses 6 and 7. They say this. If we say that we have fellowship with him, with God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But, verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Stop right there. Now, for many years as a pastor, I taught verse 7. When I did, I missed the point. Oh, what I said when I taught was not biblically in error. I just wasn't really on target with what verse 7 was actually saying. In verse 6, we found the first of three false statements given there. The false statement is this. If I proclaim to people that I am in fellowship with the Holy God, but my steady life pattern is one of unholiness, then I'm telling people a lie. This is what we saw on last Friday's broadcast. Now, though, look again at verse 7. It begins with our English word, B-U-T, the word but. In the English class, our teachers called this kind of word a coordinating conjunction. Verse 7 coordinates with verse 6. In verse 7, we find the antidote to the lie there in verse 6. The lie again was this. If I'm in fellowship or I have a life-experiencing community with God, but I am personally living a consistent life of sinfulness, that's a lie. Well, the antidote to that is verse 7, which says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. I'm going to use three words beginning with the letter R, like in the word rabbit. Let me just give you the three words. First of all, I'm going to talk about reality. Then I'm going to talk about relationship, then result. First of all, reality. By the way, I guess I could also use the word fact here because the reality or the fact of verse 7 is this. They are walking in a life pattern of godliness, of holiness. They are walking in the light. That's the reality stated here in verse 7. If we walk in the light, the Greek verb here is that this is real. This is actually what's happening. Those that are doing that, they are doing acts that come from their model, their pattern, who is Jesus. You and I were saved to be like Jesus. And Romans 8, 29 and 30 say that we have been predestinated to be like Jesus. And the ultimate fulfillment of that Christ-likeness is going to come when we see him face to face. But... At the moment of salvation, until we see him face to face, we are already beginning to reflect the life of Jesus because his life is in us. That's the reality. We're growing in Christ's likeness. We are walking in the light. We're living a life of holiness. That's our life pattern. But now my second word is the word relationship. Verse 7 again says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship, listen now, one with Another. Now, here's the part I messed up for so many years. I taught that the words one another refer to you and I and other believers. We're in fellowship with one another as other believers. But these words one another don't mean that. The words one another to refer to us and to God. Verse 6 and verse 7 are about a person being in fellowship with God. If we walk in the light or in holiness as he, God, is in the light, that is the signal that tells me that I really am in fellowship with God. The true and the genuinely saved person has a life pattern of holiness and godliness. Now, other people see it, and by our fruit, other people say, yes, that person really is a child of God. They live like a child of God. I see Jesus in them. That's the relationship. When we walk in the light, we have fellowship with God. That's the one another, you and 
are with God. I'm having fellowship with God. But then we come to my third R word, which is the word result. You need to keep your brain in gear, please. The word result. You see, verse 7 ends this way. And as a person is walking in light and they're in fellowship with God and connected to our walk and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This verse is describing the true born-again person. This verse says two ongoing actions are consistently taking place. The first one we said was this, we are consistently living in godliness. But the second one is this, while you and I are consistently living in godliness, God, number two, is consistently cleansing us of our sins through the power of Jesus' blood atonement. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. You know what Hebrews says. Now, please, friend, listen. The very best believers, even the apostles themselves, they could never, we could never walk in fellowship with a holy God without needing a cleansing from time to time. For me, frankly, it's a daily thing. We can't walk in light with God and our sins that we spot, our sins that we see as we're reading the word and so on. We can't walk with God and our sin remain undealt with. So what does God do? He cleanses them. Anyone walking in light with God will have to come to the point of recognizing some sin issues in their life. And then they do, when they recognize their sin issues, they do what verse 9 says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But listen again, friend. God desires us to be in fellowship with him more than we desire to be in fellowship with God. God's passion to be in a relationship, an experiential relationship with us, far supersedes our desire to be in fellowship with him. So what does God do? God designed a way for us to remain in the light with him while we are in the whole process of seeing our sins, that's part one of the process. We see our sins, we recognize it. Part two, we confess our sins. Then part three, we gain forgiveness of our sins. Here is the takeaway from verse seven today. Here it is. Consistently walking saints have a consistent cleansing from God because God wants our consistent fellowship with him. When you and I are walking with God consistently, trying to walk in the steps of our Savior, trying to follow our Savior and guide, you know the song. As we're consistently trying to do that, we're going to stumble. We're going to recognize issues and areas of our life that need to be transformed. When those unholiness spots show up, God immediately cleanses them. He brings conviction. We then confess. We get cleansing. And friend, God wants us and cleanses us so that we can remain in his presence. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.